Hi everyone, welcome to Espresso Press Design. Mary here. I promised a little project and today is the day. I think you can call this one that was on my bucket list and it turned out pretty well. So I'm going to demonstrate how to do it today. And it is vellum paper napkins that you can also use for washi tape and I'm going to uh, here's a little piece of the this is the closest thing I've ever come up with that truly resembles washi. So first of all, I'm going to show you the difference between the waxed napkins and the regular napkin. And I'm also standing up for this, so <laughs> um, I'll show you the difference and then I'll tell you what you need. Okay, there's that one. Here's this one. Here's this one, which has less white in it. Of course, if you're doing it, you're probably going to want to look for ones with more white. And there's the difference. In that one. Okay. So what you're going to need or your napkins, of course, some candles. I just use white usually. Some parchment paper. Some blotting paper. Whatever you want to use. I have two different kinds here. I usually use construction paper, kids construction paper. Or you can use, as you're blotting, another digital, which this is filmed. And you keep blotting with this, and eventually it gets covered with wax and turns into vellum too. Uh, this is 24 pound. The lightest copy weight paper actually works better for this. And I have one little piece to show you. And you're going to need a hot iron. So, let me get my, I'm going to do a few with you and tell you what I've found. small one of that one and another one of this one if we have time and a leaf okay sorry if I'm moving out of frame here so what you're going to do is put your napkin down. And what I have found is the napkins do not get as hot as if you're doing them with paper. As if you're doing this technique with paper. So you have to go over it a lot more times 
with wax and do each side because you have to get the wax to soak entirely through. And for some reason, <laughs> napkins um, I don't know if the word is conduct, but they, um, and then once your napkin gets nice and hot, you're just going to keep going over it like this. I can tell right now that the paper is harder than the napkin. And you're just going to keep going over it until it's nice and soaked with your handle. And you're going to have to, I have two cords here intertwining. So <laughs> if things move like they just did, that's why. And if the table moves, that's why. So you want to get your paper and your napkin nice and hot. You got to be quick, quicker than this, that's for sure. And then keep going over it. And I can tell it's getting more see-through. Okay. Flip this one over and do the other side. If you have some little white in there, when you're doing this on paper or whatever, that's your clue to know that the wax did not soak entirely through. Just a second here. I'm going to see if I can go under instead of over. I should probably just move the camera. Okay. When you do this on paper, it gets so hot that you almost can't touch it. But on napkin, it just takes longer, that's all. And the thinner the napkin, the better it works. See all that wax went through there. I still missed a few places, but I want to keep this video not so long. And the one you'll see most is the next one because it has the most white. I'm hoping the orange is helping you to see it getting more transparent as it gets a little coat of wax over it.
So maybe you could try aluminum foil under this parchment to increase the temperature a little bit. I don't have any here with me right now. Make sure your iron is on dry. And I did separate these napkins to get the only one ply. Okay. And they're going to all feel different too. Let's see if I can get this whole thing or not. Since this one has the most white, it's the one you're going to be able to tell the most difference. And then I'll tell you what I've found using this technique. You can glue it. Whether or not you can sew it, I don't know. Um, I've had the papers. Some of them at least two years now. I've never noticed any cracking. Discoloration. There, yeah, you see the difference in that? It's telling me it's pretty well soaked. And this is a very thin napkin. So I'm, <laughs> I'm really uh, glad because if I didn't find, oops, I just tore it. Darn, didn't mean to do that, and that's the first time I've ever um, I've ever uh, actually done that. I usually get pretty pretty strong. I haven't had any problems. Well, actually, that's what I think I did. I rubbed the side of my candle over this one because it's so thin. And you'll be able to tell some of them get more waxy than others. actually whoops that one didn't work very well but I've actually put this one through the trimmer and it didn't tear so maybe I already had a little tear in there okay Just that one. okay and you could and you should keep going as long as you can. Get as much wax on there as possible. That way it gets stronger. Because you're still, you're not putting glue or anything. to strengthen up the napkin. You're not doing Mod Podge, but that's also the beauty of it. It doesn't feel like that 
big plastic stuff. It just feels like a like a beautiful piece of whoops. Boy, this one's really weak. You know what? I know what's going on. It's not hot enough. Because I can't feel the candle melting. So maybe just go slower. Yeah. Go slower. Okay, so I'm going to show you the difference between paper and napkin. This is probably going to pick up some wax. can tell it like melting right away. And it's pretty much almost done in two seconds because it gets much hotter. Okay, 11 minutes. There's a few little white spots. Yeah, that's that's it's definitely hotter. Okay, see that shiny on there? Not the entire thing, but it will kind of look like drops. That's when you uh, put your blotting paper. And blot off the excess. Because you don't want those little... I can see it here, but I can't catch it in the camera. So there's your wet vellum. And this stuff is gorgeous. Feels gorgeous works gorgeous if you use the thicker papers you can make bookmarks <laughs> i put it um in a book in the sun and i never in the hot sun i've never noticed any residual wax ever coming off okay so yeah that's what happened. I couldn't feel the wax melting. Whereas on here it just glides because it gets hotter. So you do have to um, just hold, just iron it longer. Make sure it's very hot so that your wax is melting. Okay. Now on to the techniques. If you were going, now I personally think it would just make a beautiful page. You can glue it on a cover. Um, you might want to test your different glues. But I know it works with the glue that I use, which is like a book binding glue. I'm pretty sure it will work with Fabri-Tac. Oh, the other one. Oh, what's it called? I always forget the name of it. The one that everyone uses with the steel tip. I'm sure that would probably work. Um, where's my little piece here? When I say, can you sew it? I don't know. But you can still tear it quite easily. 
So if I were doing a pocket, I would probably reinforce the top. And I would probably reinforce the sides. See if I can get a little strip here. Reinforce the sides with a with a channel edge. Like so. And I'm pretty sure you could probably get away with using it as a pocket. A little bag. I'm not sure. Just not sure. As I said, this was on my bucket list um, to try. And this was actually the first time I got around to trying it. So there's that napkin is a little beige. This one has some white but it has a texture. So um, that one definitely did not want to get hot, <laughs> but it finally did. So that's the, that's the trick is to make sure it gets hot. Um, the paper, the best way is to make sure, well, not make sure, um, the thinner the copy paper, the better it works, or the more translucent it gets. And then again, for washi, homemade washi, it's the best technique I've ever found. I'm just going to see if I have a piece of, I do, here's a piece of scrapbook. I've never actually tried it with scrapbook. So let's see what happens with that for my remaining few minutes. And this is also much safer than trying to melt wax and then brush it on with a, I mean, unless you have a warmer, a wax warmer or something, or scraping wax pellets or melting your wax on your iron and then it's dripping down your arm and that really doesn't work very well. <laughs> and this, I mean, it might take you a little while to do a whole sheet. See, that's, that's much harder. Much, much harder. Your scrapbook paper. Well, that's double-sided. Should choose one that's single-sided. I forgot that's double-sided. That's kind of a, wouldn't call it heavy scrap pa scrapbook paper, but I don't know if you could do it on the heaviest cardstock scrapbook paper. Can give it a try. There it is. You can see that it's not very translucent because I didn't. I should have chose one. Blotted. I should have chose one. Not double sided. And the napkins I found, they really don't need blotted. 
taping these blotted. There, it's nice, nice little bookmark there. Let me see if I can quickly find I know I don't have any in here. Um, I could try this, which would be something akin to scrapbook. Don't have any in my little box here single-sided and a, not a thin weight scrapbook paper. A thin weight I'm sure would work. See how hot that gets when it's paper. <laughs> it's like one and done. All this. Well, that pip probably picked up from the other side. Okay, I don't want to run out of time. I'm at two minutes. And pretty soon. See those little light areas? That means it doesn't have wax. That needs blotted. Okay, so that is our project. That one's done. That one's done. That one's done. There's the, this is what I'll be using it for mostly, I'm sure, maybe. I'm going to try a pocket, but I don't generally don't put so paper in my sewing machine. So if any of you sew, <laughs> you can try it and let me know in the comments if it will sew. I don't know. But super fun, super easy. Doesn't feel sticky, gluey, tacky, and it's actually pretty strong once you get enough wax in there. But like I said, you can tear it. Okay, I don't know where it cut me off. <laughs> okay, I know it cut me off. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Super fun. There you go. There's your washi. Here's your napkin. If you sew, which I said before, and I probably got cut off, I don't know if it will sew. I generally don't put paper in my sewing machine, so you can try it. Whether it will make a bag, a pocket, I don't know. I will probably primarily be using it for washi. I am going to try a pocket, like I said. I don't know if that got cut off, but um, that's primarily what I will be using it for. And that's another thing in my D stash. Um, I have a hard time finding pretty napkins around here, so. I have packs and packs of ones I don't really like. And this was one of them. And um, if I couldn't find something to do with this, those packs were also going in my declutter. I've used it so many times, I'm tired of looking at it. Um, you can use these in. Uh, Slides. Is that what it is? Now my mind 
I'm just blank. You know, the little, um, <laughs> my mind is totally blank. I don't know what that is. I think it's a slide. Make a nice little, or, uh, you know, cut a circle. Oh my, what's that called? The insect things. You know what they are. They just, I don't know, <laughs> threw me off track. <clears throat> but it's a nice little project. I'm sure you can come up with things to do with it. I will try a pocket, like I said, and I'll let you know how it goes. But I think if you just reinforce the top and the sides, it'll work. I definitely know you can glue it. And I definitely know it will make a beautiful washi. So, I hope you had fun. If something gets cut off in here, that's why. Um, try try both whenever I get around to it I try to make some because it feels feels beautiful okay I'll see you next time everyone thanks for stopping by and thanks for your time bye <laughs>